Benvenuti scholars, I'm Dr. Marquette, and today we're going to tackle quantitative research and whether it's right for your dissertation. Now I know what you're thinking, I can't do math. Lots of people feel stressed out at the thought of having to work with formulas. Calculations create a sense of panic and bad memories of high school math classes recalling feelings of confusion, anger, and frustration. You, my friend, may be suffering from arithmophobia. In fact, you've been scared of the quant monster most of your life. Am I right? Look at those intimidating eyes, those ferocious teeth, that menacing grin. You've been so petrified of the quant monster that he's held you back by the fear he inflicts. It's like the quant monster has devoured you whole. However, what if you could save time and money by taming the quant monster. Most scholar, practitioner, doctoral students say they want to get through the dissertation process as quickly as possible. Scheduling and conducting interviews and or focus groups could take weeks or months, but collecting quantitative data is normally much quicker, hours or even minutes if the data is archival. Creating codes and themes, let alone writing chapters four and five, could take months However, no coding is necessary for quantitative studies, and you can start writing those same chapters almost immediately. A quick point about IRB. Not always, but in some cases, in quantitative studies, your data may be archived. And if it's archival data and it's de-identified, that can lead to quicker IRB because your study would be deemed exempt. In other cases, when your study doesn't present anything beyond minimal risk, it would be deemed as expedited. And in these cases, quantitative research can actually be quicker when it comes to IRB. Another consideration for saving time comes down to a question that every doctoral student must ask themselves. Am I a strong writer? If you're a student who wants to pull your hair out at the thought of writing or when you read feedback about your writing, and keep in mind that quantitative studies are normally much shorter than qualitative studies. What that means is that there is less writing involved, but therefore less anxiety and frustration with the writing process compared to a qualitative study. So now let's translate all of this into what it means for your bank account. A shorter dissertation process may mean fewer courses, and fewer courses may mean keeping money in your pocket. Similarly, shorter dissertations may mean a shorter contract with an editor if you need one and we know editing services are not cheap. So all these considerations come down to the main question, when do you want to graduate? For many, quantitative studies are the ticket to a quicker journey to the cap and gown. What if the quant monster is actually not all that scary? Did you know there are tools that are available to take the fear out of working with math in your study? Are you starting to see the quant monster in a different light? Could it be possible that he isn't as bad as you once thought? Instead of choosing a qualitative study due to arithmophobia, instead evaluate what might be at your fingertips for a great quantitative study. Do you work in an environment that has a large number of potential participants? Do you have a realistic access to archival data that an organization has been collecting with surveys and kept in files for months or even years? Possible large groups could be teachers, parents, nurses, students over 18, or any large group of employees. Remember that it all comes down to site authorization. So has this information piqued your interest? Maybe you are totally against a quantitative study before this video. What do you think now? Thanks and I hope this was of value to you. If you have other ideas or other needs, please let us know what we can do uh, in upcoming videos that would be helpful to you. With that said, we have more videos coming and more topics coming, stay tuned.